Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. I am Tyler Carmen, alongside Rob Hastings. Rob Hastings will jo join me momentarily. Uh, we had some technical difficulties down on the field with the scoreboard and the lights. They seem to have gotten that figured out just at the nick of time. I'll go ahead and give you guys your uh, Beat Digger starting line lineup, which is brought to you by Equitable Savings and Loan. Mobile banking on the go makes banking easier for when you are on the go. Check it out today. Your starters for the Beat Diggers, number one, Keegan Link, number 14, Luke Seawald, number 16, Jackson Dunker, number 21, Nick Wellen, number 23, Kyle Wellen, number 33, Hunter Dunn, number 34, Jace Krieger, number 52, Cesar Hinejos, number 79, Joshua Cantu, number 80, Edgar Escalante, and number 87, Caden Moriarty. Lance Schwint is in his third year as a head coach, assisted by Travis Travis Lefevre, Larry Mills, and Ace Wellen. The athletic director for your Brush Beat Diggers is Bradley Bass. Brush Beat Diggers tonight are hosting the Alliance Bulldogs. The starters for them, number two, Colin Schreier, number eight, Connor Farrieter, number 12, Chase King, number 20, Trevor Dubre, number 29, Logan Leistritz, number 40, Eric Fulhert, number 63, Coulter Mann, number 64, Braden Palmer, number 66, Zing Zhu, number 67, Matt Escamilla, and number 77, Mario Garza. Captains are currently in the middle of the field doing a coin toss right now. We seem to have gotten the scoreboard working. The Alliance Bulldogs come in and come into tonight's contest 0-3 on the year. Your brush beat diggers are 1-1 one one after having a bye week last week after that tough loss to Fort Morgan. Remember they won in week one against the Wiggins Tigers. The Alliance Bulldogs lost 30-9 in week one at York, Nebraska then lost 32 to 13 against Shadron and then lost 35 to 7 uh, against Hastings in their previous three weeks Lions Bulldogs are taking the field it looks like they're gonna receive Brush Beat Diggers are gonna kick off kicking off south to north this opening kickoff is brought to you by Buildings by Design. When it comes to experience, Buildings by Design is the best in the business. Quality, commitment, and experience makes Buildings by Design the only choice when it comes to your next project. Number 40 for the Brush Beat Diggers. Going to kick off. Kicks it down to the 15-yard line. Colin Schreier for the Bulldogs is going to return it back to the call it 32, 33 yard line. B Diggers are going to take the field on defense. Two weeks ago, they played very good defense in the first half against Fort Morgan and actually went into the half with the lead. Bulldogs are going to line up in an I formation, three split wide. Fullback and running back behind the quarterback. Going to turn around and hand it off to the big fullback, number 40, for the Alliance Bulldogs. Eric Fullhart. Nick Wellen with tackle. Fullback picked up about five yards on the carry. Going to line up in a different formation now. Two, or no, I'm sorry, three split wide, one to the near side. He's going to send another in motion. It's that big fullback in motion again. He's going to come around the corner. Only going to pick up about two yards. Lions early on showing a dedication to running the ball out of different formations. Third and five. Colin Schroer is going to check back into the game for the Bulldogs. They're going to go four wide here out of the shotgun. Number 40 is a running back. He's going to drop back and pass. Going to be batted down at the line of scrimmage by number 79, Joshua Cantu. Great defensive play. Bulldogs going to trot on several replacements. Looks like they're going to have to punt. Once again, this is Tyler T Carmen on 1010 KSIR. Rob Hastings will, I'm sure, be joining me momentarily. Quick opening drive by the Bulldogs. Going to go three and out. Line up to punt from the 32-yard line. And it sends it sky high. 
Number 34, Jace Krieger, is going to catch it at about the 35-yard line. Vance at about five yards. And the Brush B Digger offense is going to take the field, led by number 12, Alejandro Montos Garcia. Earlier in the week, Coach Lance Swin discussed how important this bye week was for his Brush B Diggers to get healthy. Quarterback Hondo was definitely part of that conversation. Got banged up in that loss to Fort Morgan. They're going to line up in their tight formation. Escalante is going to come in motion. The far side to the near side. He's going to turn around and hand it off to Nick Wellen. Nick Wellen got a big hole off the left side. He's going to pick up the first down. Ten-yard carry for Nick Wellen. Good start for the B-Digger leading rusher. Number five, Caden Schwinn's going to check into the game for the Brush Bee Diggers. He's going to be split out wide, far right. Going to line up in tight formation again. Luke Seawall tight end to the near side. He's going to drop back to pass. Hondo's oh, got to scramble out to his right. He's got to try and throw it. And he's completed it to number 80, Edgar Escalante. That's going to be about a 12-yard pickup for Escalante. Hondo showing off scrambling ability. His legs must be feeling better. It's going to be another beat digger first down. Two plays, two first downs for the diggers. Number 87, Caden Moriarty is going to check back into the game as well as number 11, Eric Gable Rush. Eric Gable Rish, I apologize. Beat diggers quickly into plus territory. 35 yard line lined up in tight formation. Going to turn around and pitch it to the right to Nick Wellen. Nick Wellen's going to keep turning those legs. Going to pick up about three yards. Nick Wellen, the ball carry over down to number 66, Zenith Zulu. Brush Beat Diggers certainly haven't had any problems this year getting off to quick starts in the first half. It's the second half where they've struggled. They've yet to score, as a matter of fact, in the second half of their first two games this year. But off to a good start here. Brush Beat Diggers in their burgundy helmets, burgundy jerseys, yellow pants, yellow numbers. Hondo's going to take the handoff and pitch it around to the left side this time. Number 23, Kyle Wellen. And Kyle Wellen's going to pick up a ton of yards on that play. Going to pick up about 15 for another beat digger first down. Visiting Alliance Bulldogs are in gray pants and gray helmets along with white jerseys with blue numbers. Beat diggers lined up in tight formation for about the 15 yard line. Escalante is going to go in motion from left to right. Hondo is going to take the hand, going to take the snap, turn around, and hand it off to Nick Well and Nick Well doesn't look like he gained anything on that play. Lions Bulldogs look like they have a big defensive line, two big dudes right in the middle. I'll give you the numbers as soon as I can see them. Did a good job stuffing the run up the middle on that one. Beat Digger so far have had success running to the outside stretch plays and pitches. Let's see if they go back to that again. Hondo under center. Going to take the snap. Tight formation. Going to turn around. Little misdirection. Hand it off to Kyle Wellen again. Kyle Wellen's going to make a spin move and get down to the 10-yard line. My partner Rob Hastings is just now joining me in. Rob, what was the problem down there? Uh, one of the big disconnect boxes for the lights blew up. Caught fire, huh? <laughs> Caught fire. It was a mess. I run to the hospital, grab some wire and a bunch of places, come back, and they're on. I'm afraid to look, see what they did. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just let it work until it doesn't anymore. We'll yeah, fix it to the end of the game. The lights go dim here pretty quick. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Well, beat diggers so far off to a really good start. Had a good opening uh, defensive series. Held the uh, Bulldogs to three plays and a punt, and have since marched down the field, gaining about 50 yards so far. As Nick Wellen takes another handoff, picks up another couple yards. He's down about the six after that run. Oh, first and goal. That big crown on the field, it's kind of hard to tell where the... When you get the sticks over there, it's kind of hard to tell what line they're on yeah. or what yard line. So you got started and everything, huh? Yeah, I got started, and I was almost worried. <laughs> like, I can't do this by myself, right? Well, that's the best way to learn. <laughs> you are done right off to the right side. 
Yeah, go ahead. I'm catching my breath. Yeah, Escalante coming in motion from right to left. Going to hand it off up the middle, and it's going nowhere. Good defensive stop by the Bulldogs on first and goal. Big number 77 on in on the tackle. They've got two big defensive tackles, 77 and 75 for the Bulldogs. Mario Garza and Noah Freeze. Yeah, one of them goes 305 and the other one 270. Yeah, them are big boys. Not to mention number 40, big middle linebacker for him. They're leading rusher so far of the night. He took a couple handoffs early in the series. Second and goal, five. We're going to try and punch it up the middle. Going to gain a couple yards, maybe. Going right at the big guys. Gars and uh, Freeze there in the middle. Freeze it is a 305 pounder. Gars at 270. Looks like we're setting right on the three yard line, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Escalante is going to check back into the game for the Diggers. Third and goal from the three. Hunter Dunn is going to split out wide right. Escalante is going to split out wide left. Luke Seawald, who caught that touchdown two weeks ago at Fort Murray, he's going to line up at tight end on the left side. Honda's going to take the snap and drop back and get sacked right at the 10-yard line. Number 64 for the Bulldogs, Ball Brayden Palmer. Ball came out, but it blew him dead at the 9-yard line. He fourth and long now. Fourth and nine and a half. Nine yards. Looks like it's right on that nine yard mark yeah. here to the near side hash marks. Nice to have those hash marks, isn't it? No, oh, very. Makes it easy to see. So fourth and goal from the nine. They're going to line up in a tight formation again. Hondo under center. Going to take the snap and turn around and pitch it back to... I couldn't tell. Kyle Wellen, number 23. Is it, is it Kyle Wellen? I couldn't tell. He got wrapped up so fast and drug back almost to the 20 yard line. The Bulldogs gang tackled him for a loss of yards there, and the Diggers are going to turn it over on down. We haven't called that name for quite a while. No, and he uh, started the game off really well, have two runs for 15 and 5. Right now, leading rusher for the Brush B Diggers, Kyle Wellen. Sophomore for the B Diggers. Bulldogs are going to line up in there. Trips formation, three wide, and handed off to big number 40 up the middle again. B. Digger's done a really good job stuffing the middle so far, not allowing him to get going. He looks like a load. I wouldn't want to tackle him. <laughs> don't like those big guys. Huh? No, not really. Winding down here already under four minutes in the first quarter. First B. Digger's had a nice opening offensive drive, driving the ball 50 yards down to, uh, down to inside the 10-yard line and couldn't convert. Bulldogs are going to take the shotgun snap, and quarterback's going to try and gain a couple yards. He's going to take it out to about the 12-yard line. Uh, that was well and in on the tackle. It's a leading tackler for the beat diggers. Number 20, Trevor Dubray's quarterback for the Bulldogs. Picked up about two yards in carry. Last year, there was a lot of throwing. Well, they keep lining up like they're going to throw it, and then they just hand it off. They're going to go four wide here, three to the far side. They're going to throw that way and overthrows him, trying to set up the screen pass there and overthrew his receiver. And just like that, it's going to be fourth and six for the Bulldogs. Quick offensive series by them so far, not able to do much. Got too many papers here. They were trying to blow away earlier. That's probably was, why they're all mixed up. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly why they're all mixed up. I was finding everything I could to set on them to hold them down. Bulldogs are going to have to punt. Punter is standing back at his own goal line. Got off a nice booming kick last time. Got off another good one. This one's going to go about 40 yards and bounce out at about the 38-yard line. So the beat there is good great starting. field position. Yeah, great starting field position. Going to be in the Bulldogs' 38-yard line. Oh, they even moved it up. 36-yard line, even better for wow. 36. Beat Diggers headed north. Clock down to 236 here in the first period. I'm just glad the clock's still working, to be honest. <laughs> Anything's still working. We I didn't. figured I'd be driving back in the dark. We didn't have anything up until right before the game started, so this is great. Tight formation again. Escalante in motion left to right. Going to turn around, hand it off to Nick Well. Nick Welton 
Six is foot in the ground and picks up about 12 yards. Nick oh, Llewellyn. man, he was headed right and, like I say, he planted that foot, cut it back, and uh, got a 10-yard, 11-yard gain. That's what Lance Swint talked about earlier with John Beltran. Getting Nick Wellen going early on and keeping him going, keeping him fresh, probably why we saw some runs by Kyle Wellen, and I'm sure we'll see Krieger and and Dunn and probably even Jackson Dunker run the ball a little bit to the beat diggers tonight. He wants his play calling to be better and he wants his guys fresher come that second half. He thinks that that'll, that'll uh, turn into more wins for his brush beat diggers. Rich to the far side now. I'm going to hand it up the middle to Nick Wellen again. Nick Wellen forward progress should give him about four yards. I'll give him three it looks like. That crown's really deceiving when you're up here. But it's sure nice to have the uh, hash marks. Definitely. Caden Schwent, number five, is going to check into the game for us speed diggers. He's going to split out far left. So I have tight formation again. Put a little slot back in there on the left side. He's going to turn around and pitch it back to his left. And Bulldogs sniff that out. It'll be a loss of two or three there. Big 64 on the tackle. It's Brett. Braden Palmer, senior, 6'4", 200. Third and long for the Diggers. Just under a minute, clock running in the first quarter. Brush beat Diggers and the Lions Bulldogs. Score is nothing, nothing. 24-yard line, eight to go. Going to turn around and fake the pitch, drop back to pass. Hondo's going to get sacked again. That's the second pass play in the row for the Brush Beat Diggers that ended up in at least a five-yard loss of sack. He had a good fake there, had plenty of time, but nobody was open. Well, I imagine that these Alliance Bulldogs, as much spread offense as they run, their defense probably ought to be pretty good at defending the pass, so no surprise there. After the play, it looked like Moriarty might have been open, but fourth and 15. Yes, fourth 15, Hunter Dunn's going to split out wide right. We're going to go tight formation, Escalante, and we have a whistle. I think it's going to be the quarter, and it is. Zero, zero tie. This is Tyler Carmen alongside Rob Hastings on 1010 KSIR. We're going to take a quick break here after the end of the first quarter. Come right back with Brush Beat Diggers hosting the Alliance Bulldogs from Brush, Colorado. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tyler Carmen alongside Rob Hastings on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. We're in Brush, Colorado in the Frank Mercer Memorial Press Box and Brush Beat Diggers hosting the Alliance Bulldogs. Start of the second quarter, Brush has flipped the field. They're now running north to south from the Alliance 30-yard line. Score still nothing, nothing. And it is currently fourth and 15 for Brush Beat Diggers. Let's see if they can't come up with something to pick up 15 yards. Hondo's going to take the, the Oh, he's wide open. And he's going to drop back to pass and by oh, Luke oh, Seawall oh, coming oh, across oh, the middle on a post route. Oh man, 31 yards on the for, touchdown. For, forget the 15 for the first down. They said, let's just go ahead and get all 31. Luke Seawall's beautiful route outrunning his own defender across the field. Hondo throwing a dime. First play of the uh, second quarter. And his first rush score of the game is brought to you by Western Engineering Consultants. Engineering and consulting services for all of your projects. Strong commitment to their clients' needs. Set them apart. Get your project started the right way with Western Engineering Consultants. Kick is up and good for the rush beat diggers. How about that? Beat diggers up seven to nothing. Coming out firing in the second quarter. Kick is good. We like to write that down. Yes. Lance Schwint talked about his play calling, mainly in the second half, but that was a pretty gutsy play call right there and a great one. Coach Schwint pulling one out of the old bag. <laughs> Joy Mills right down below us. Most people call her Marsha, but her dad calls her Joy. Great <laughs> big smile. <laughs> her, her husband, a longtime coach for the Beat Diggers, now out there on the sidelines. He's getting kind of old. He's older than me. Oh, wow. <laughs> Larry, Larry Mills, legendary coach for the Beat Diggers. Rush Beat Diggers setting up on the far hash of the 40. Kick this off. Uh, that's a new kicker this week. For trying to Rush catch that number. Number 40 for the Rush Beat Diggers. Yeah, I don't have a 40. No, I don't have a number 40 either. Maybe it's the same player, just a different number. Could be. Nice Regardless high kick. Going to get it down to the 15-yard line. Number 
two for the Alliance Bulldogs. Colin Schreier is going to receive it and advance it about 10 yards. Not quite sure who for the beat diggers got that. I think it's Escalante, but hard to tell on the far side of the field. They do a really good job game tackling. Oh, 16. I thought it was 80, but that's Jack Jackson Dunker, I think, on that tackle. That guy's a lot bigger than him. Bulldogs going to set up about the 22-yard line. Schrader's 6'4", 190. Oh, oh, excuse me. Yeah. yeah. Going to take the shotgun snap. Looking for the screen play again. Ooh. Cardina, I believe it was Cardina, sniffed it out, but couldn't make the tackle. Oh, no, that's Jackson Dunker. I apologize. Jackson Dunker sniffed it out. Finally get the tackle. Out there by Hunter Dunn. But Number eight, he, Connor Farrier for the Bulldogs. The one that made that reception. Picked up oh, about 15 yards on the carry. Beaters had the right defense there. Dunker just couldn't put him down. He was giving up a lot of size there. Bulldogs with two wides here to the near side, to short side. Big shotgun snap again, hand off to big, number 40. Number 40's got the right edge. He cuts back, picks up the first down, is going to be brought down just across the 50-yard line. Picks up about 20 yards on the carry. Be in beat digger territory at the 48-yard line. Longest run first of the and game 10, yeah. for the Bulldogs. They're going to split out. Two to the far side, far right, two to the far to the near left. Forty's gonna come in motion right to left. Gonna take snap and hand it off to the running back. And the running back's gonna pick up about six yards. I believe the running back is number eight. Colin Ferrier. Senior at 5'10, 170. Dubre, the senior quarterback, 6'1, 165. Supporting that number 20 on that uh, white uniform with the blue letters and little gray pants with some stripes. Beat diggers, of course, they're cardinal with gold pants, cardinal leggings. Going to take the Another shotgun. underneath handoff. Yep, shotgun snap. Number 40 again is going to barrel his way down to the 35-yard line. He's going to pick up the first down. About a seven-yard pickup, it looks like, roughly. Right on nose ball, right on the 30-yard line. Kind of spreading the diggers out. Spread them out, making it hard for them to gang tackle, something they do so well. Here we go, spreading out again. Do the far right, one of the far left. Two running backs, quarterback. Going to take the shotgun tap. Fair eater, clear over there by the bench. Going to set side. up that screen again. A great block, and Ferrier's going to have the first down and a little more. He's going to get down to about the 25-yard line. I think he's inside there almost to the 20. Had an extra spurt there. I thought he went down earlier, too. Going to pick up out another. Let's see where they spot this thing. You're right, about at the 20-yard line. Yeah, nose of the ball right there on the 20. Headed to our left, which is towards the north. Take the shotgun snap, handoff big number 40 again. Flag flies. He's going to pick up about four yards, but we'll wait to see what happens with the flag. That one way up in the air. Showing off his arm, the ref is there. It's going to be a false start <laughs> on the Bulldogs. Uh, number eight, uh, Ferrader, come over and had a discussion with the line judge. Said somebody was across the line the way he was pointing at it. It'll cost him five. We're going to start back at 25 again, first and 15 for the Bulldogs. It's a long trip to uh, Alliance. Uh, Alliance gets a long trip home tonight. They do. We made it home about 1.30 or 2 last year. Shotgun snap again. They're going to do an inside handoff. And he doesn't want it to fall down. He does not want to fall down. He's going to pick up close to 15 yards there with the need for the first down. Was not big number 40. It was, that guy was tw 29. It is 29 for the Lions Bulldogs. Leister is. Yeah, Leister okay. Ritz, junior at 5'11", 195. Nice pickup. He's second in the long four for the Bulldogs from Alliance, Nebraska. We're going to go trips to the left this time. Oh, and quick snap. Quarterback was not ready for it. He's going to take the sack on this one. He was not ready for that snap. He got, is, got him right in the belly and yep, got him right, to the ground. Dropped to the ground and picked up the ball, tried to make something happen, but he's going to have some choice words for his center after that one. It's just lucky to have the ball. The Eatigers had a pretty good rush on him. So now it's going to be third and nine from the 19-yard line of the Brush Beat Diggers. Line threatening here. Seven nothing halfway through the second quarter. Beat Diggers look a little out here on the left side of the line. Trips left again for the Bulldogs. Shotgun snap. He's going to roll to his left. He's had number two wide open coming across the field. He's going to find him in the back of the end zone. Is he in? Yes, he is. is. Touchdown two. from the 19-yard uh, line. 19 yard touchdown reception from, uh, excuse me while I find the uh, quarterback's name. 20. Yeah, yes. Trevor Dubray. 
to Colin Schreer. He had him open about for half of that play. He didn't find him until the very end, but back in the corner of the end zone, Bulldogs are going to line up for the extra point. Number nine, Creighton Siza. Going to get the kick, and it looks good. And it is. Bulldogs tied up 7-7, seven 7-18 seven, seven left in the second quarter. Northeastern, when it comes to your future, Northeastern is miles ahead, and they're a college that, closest, that is close to home. Northeastern Junior College is down the road, Sterling, Colorado. Well, the beat will get the ball back. They played really well so far. But You're right, spreading them out like that makes it hard for them to, to gang tackle. They have some smaller defensive backs against the Lions, this bigger receiver. It's not uh, helping them at all either. Number 34, Jace Krieger. Number 23, Kyle Wellen. They're going to line up to return the kickoff for the Brush Beat Diggers. Nice to see Jace out there as he was carried off the field last week at, or two weeks ago at Fort Morgan. The nice pack on his ankle. Mm -hmm. It's great to see he's out there and ready to go. Yeah, Coach went and talked about the importance of that bye week, but also the importance of his backups being willing to step up and not miss a beat. Said he really emphasized that to his guys in two weeks. Football's a contact sport. Tough sport. Guys are going to get hurt. Got to get ready to step up. Yeah, Connor Ferry out there to kick it away. Or excuse me, though, that's uh, Creighton Siza. Eight and nine is kind of hard to distinguish it. Times, but yep. the lighting here at Brush is wonderful compared to a lot of places. So far, uh, we'll see if it. Let's see if it holds up. up. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm holding my breath. Size's okay. kick's going to get down to about the 10 yard line. Kyle Wellen's going to receive it and run up the left sideline. He's going to get to about the 30 yard line, Brush territory. Yeah, over 20 yards, I think, on that uh, return. So, he diggers will head south to our right. Here to mark that out, the 30, uh, just at the 30 about. Brush 30. Hondo trots in. He's only a sophomore. <laughs> Brush is pretty young. They're a young team. Hunter That'll... Dunn's going to split wide right. They're going to go tight formation. Hondo under center. Takes this. Going to get ready. Takes the snap. Escalante in motion. going to turn around and hand it off to, I believe, Nick Wallen. One, two, three, four, five, six. I see six guys not on the pile there. <laughs> takes about half the team to, to bring Wallen down. I think they're keying on him just a little bit. Still managed to pick up two about yards. Two yards. Here, Grish in with the play. He's just a sophomore. He's going to split out wide left to the far side. Tight makes it again. Hondo under center. He's going to take snap, turn around, look to pass. Ooh, got I think batted. that got battered down by 64. He had Kyle Wellen coming out of the backfield there. Maybe could have done something had not been batted down at the line that tall, number 64. Braden Palmer, he's a senior at 6'4 and 200 pounds. Plays defensive end very well on that play. Escalante in with the play. Hunter Dunn's going to split to the near side, in the right side. Hondo takes a snap, looks back to pass again, finds Luke Seawall coming across the middle. I mean, we're just short of the first down, I think. Ref standing right at the 40 yard line. The first down marker is at about. Oh, that is oh, first oh, down. Yeah. First down must have been the 40 yard line. Luke Seawall got an eight yard reception for the first down. They're a nice, quick kind of a jump pass by Hondo. Seawald ran a nice slant route. Just enough protection for that. He's going to line up. Escalante, far left side, he's going to come, around, come across in motion to the right, turn around and hand it off to that right side, try to run the Ooh. stretch play. <laughs> <laughs> well, and got hit, and somehow he popped out of that, and it's going to gain two or three yards. They're going to move him back a ways, but like three-yard gain, I think. Yeah. Kids are hitting pretty hard out there. They are hitting hard. Five and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Seven to seven. Score is tied. Brush beat Diggers to the Lions Bulldogs. Caden Swain in with play. He's going to split out far left. Escalante is going to split out far right. Tight formation again. Oh, and Ooh, there's a beat Diggers. Off sides, I think. Beat by. Diggers went with the hard count, and this should be on the Bulldogs. They definitely come across the line of scrimmage first. The ref's going to walk five yards. This second and eight is going to turn into a second and three. Yeah. Got to sprinkle that in every now and then. Short defenses. three is for a change here. That'll be never expecting that. Going to go with the same formation. One split out wide left, one split out wide right. Tight formation. Hundle's going to go with a little misdirection handoff. It's going to go nowhere. 
Bulldogs sniff that out. That's it. 64 that. again. Yeah, Braden Palmer. No gain on the play. Fields lo- looks really good. I know they got generators running the lights over here because they didn't have power. <laughs> so <laughs> things are all chopped up with the new school coming in. Looks like a beautiful building, but. It will be. We'll be paying for it for a long time. Well, this is true. <laughs> Should be worth it. Be I worth hope it. so. Hondo's going to take the snap oh, drop back the pass again. Tried that short slant route, and it got knocked down at the line. Cason Clark, a junior at 6'4 and 170 pounds, jumped up. He That's had hard his hands. It, hard to throw over something like that. Yeah, Hondo's not that tall. No, Hondo is not. Only 5'11". That's a tall 5'11", too. <laughs> From my perspective up here. Hondo, or you got to knock the pass down. So the Brush Beat Diggers on fourth and three from their own 48-yard line are going to line up to punt. Going to punt about 35-yard line. It's going to go high in the air. Going to come down. Oh, oh beautiful nice package. coverage. Come down right at the 25-yard line. Bulldogs return man caught it and was tackled immediately. Eric Rish with the tackle. Another Chase, sophomore stepping up there. Chase King was a return man. I think I would have called for the fair catch on that one. but They uh, gave him an awful good spot there. Yeah, they <laughs> he fell down on they, the 25. They gave him, they gave him the forward progress fell down. Oh, okay. The Rich is going to come back on defense. So the Bulldogs, on their own 25-yard line, are going to do their split formation. Two to the near side, one to the right. Shotgun snap with an inside handoff. Nothing doing there. I think Luke Sewall might have got an ankle there to kind of slow him down. The rest of the guys surrounded him. Dominic Gonsberos right there on the pile. He's only a freshman. Number 65 for the beat diggers. Lance Schmidt doing a little bit better job. Seven guys in and out. Guys fresh, hoping to have better execution in the second half. Bulldogs are going to line up two to the far right, one to the far left. Quarterback's going to be under center this time from the I formation. Turn around and hand off. And that big number 40, he's not going to cut anywhere, guys. He is going to try and run up right in the middle every time. Two yards and a cloud of dust. <laughs> it is a trigger in on the tackle. They're going to get him a very generous four yard gain there. If Josh Cantu was on a tackle there, too. He's a load. He is a load. Third and six for the Bulldogs from the B-yard line. Cantu's grown a bunch this year. He looks big out there. He's right. only a junior. Going to go two wide left, one wide right, one wide right again for the Bulldogs. Shotgun snap. Turn around. Looking for Right across the middle. Oh. And he's going to run right up the middle. Breaks the tackle at the 35-yard line. It's going to scamper all the way to the 45-yard line. Number 20, Duke Gray for the Bulldogs. Didn't see anything he likes as far as throwing the ball, so he takes off, picks up first now. Good receiver wide open, and he chose to pull it down. It was a good choice. It is going to spot ball 41. Got it. Same formation, shotgun snap. He's going to hand up off the middle, and there's that big number 40 again. He's going to forward progress, going to give him about three yards. He takers are driving people backwards. Krieger on the tackle again. I cannot emphasize that enough. Three yards and a cloud of dust. <laughs> I have yet to see him try and, and put his foot to ground and make a movement. He's got holes everywhere, but he sees he's like a bull. He just sees red and runs right at it. Well, he might get some dust down there. There's a few bare spots in the yeah, grass. Yeah, shotgun snap again. going to turn around and hand it off to number 40 again. Now there he goes, runs a stretch play a little bit. Oh. He's going to dive forward for the first down. About an eight-yard gain, number 40. Got hit right about to 50, but uh, slowed him down a little bit, but not much. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. Plus territory now from the 43-yard line of Rusty Diggers. Eric Fulcher is number 40 for the Bulldogs. He's a senior, 5'11", 165. He does not look like 165 pounds. Gonna <laughs> Maybe he's fresh when you're old. There you go, Beat Diggers. Nice job, Nick Wellen. Got a little help from, let's see who else is in there. Somebody's going to call a timeout here. Bulldogs going to go ahead and call a timeout. 105 left here in the first period, or first half. First half. I missed most of the first period. So. <laughs> I think also in on that tackle was Dominic Ontiveros. B&B Appliance. They can help you with all of your appliance needs. Stop in and see what they can do for you. Check them out on Enzyme Street in Fort Morgan. Bulldogs taking a, should be a 30 second timeout here, I think. Rush cheerleaders down on the track doing things that 
I wouldn't even attempt in my wildest dreams. You know, you can't, uh, you're not that old. You're not uh, age, that limber. Age, huh? age doesn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> I'm just not that flexible, limber, nor brave. Oh, brave too, okay. Takes a shotgun snap again, Dubray. Coming around, oh, and he's going to get sacked. Coming off the edge, <laughs> left tackle gave him up. That's nice. number 11, Gable Rich again. Oh, that's a big play. Their big oh. bigger defense is fired up now. He really chopped the arm. but uh, He did. He went get for the, the strip sack there, but still a great play. Now, I think the Bulldogs, they just call another timeout? Somebody did. Maybe that was the uh, brush beat diggers. I don't know. If it was a brush timeout, it's brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, Greg Mullen and his team are there to make the insurance world easy for you. Call them at 842-4555. 58 seconds left on the clock. About third and 12 for the Bulldogs. If I was a bet, man, I'd bet that they're going to pass. Time's getting short. Shotgun oh, looking snap. deep. He's going to throw it out wide. Nice the coverage there by the beat diggers. That's 16. Jackson Dunker. Yeah, Dunker. Even if he had caught that pass, then Dunker would have been right there. They're trying to get out of bounds, but he said, it's, it said it's an incomplete pass. Only chewed off four seconds on the clock. Beat diggers got to like that. Dunker might have got a hand on that. I couldn't tell for sure. Now it's fourth and 12, and Bulldogs look like they're trotting on their punting unit, and they are. I wouldn't trust them. I <laughs> think the beat diggers are not going to put anybody back. No, nope. the punter stands at about 49-yard line, zone territory. Makes a snap. Gets off a good kick. This thing should bounce into the end zone. It's going to, oh, beautiful punt. Hits at the 10-yard line and rolls down to about the 6. The way that thing was spinning in the air looked like it was going to spin right to the end zone, and it just hit the ground and bounced straight up. Great punt by number 9 for the Bulldogs. It's Creighton Siza again. I mean, you can't ask for much better than that. Still tied up 7-7. 45 seconds left here in the first half. Beat diggers have got a long way to go. Think they're going to air it out a little bit here? I would. No. Oh. A lot of coaches get fired for that. Huh? <laughs> Well, you come from that six-man stuff. Uh, that, that can get really yeah, crazy. There's, there's not many coaches that get fired there. Not many want to coach six-man. So <laughs> if you got one, beat uh, diggers aren't going to take their chances. They're going to go ahead and take a knee, wind it down. They're going to probably have to take another one. Going to go into the half, tied up with the Bulldogs 77. Caden Sweat bringing the play in here. It'll be a short timeout. Beautiful night for football. It is a beautiful night. A little stinky. I don't know if that's the Buffaloes or something. I was afraid it was that electrical box down there. I, you know what? I kind of thought the same thing when I walked up here. I thought, man, I hope that's not what I'm smelling. They're going to take another kneel down and trot in for halftime. Brush Beat Diggers tied up the Alliance Bulldogs 7-7. Seven seven. Brush Beat Digger halftime show is brought to you by Stubbs Gas and Oil. Fill up your cooler and gas up your car at Stubbs Gas and Oil. Easy and convenient. Make them the only stop you need on your way to the big game. We'll go ahead and take a break. We'll come back. I am Tyler Carmen alongside Rob Hastings on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, to 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Tyler Carmen alongside Rob Hastings from Brush, Colorado tonight. Beat Diggers taking on the Alliance Bulldogs from Alliance, Nebraska. This is still the halftime show brought to you by Stubbs Gas and Oil. Got about a minute and a half left until the Brush Beat Diggers and Bulldogs take the field again. Brush will receive the second half kickoff. The Beat Diggers must have went over to Thompson Primary School to have their halftime. <laughs> they yeah, come they jogging come, in from the east. Come uh, come jogging in out of the dark. Probably had to jog about a half mile. Yeah, no they, wonder they gave them an extra three minutes or so. They got a new practice field just, just outside the... Uh, far side fence of the field here. It's pretty nice. They had a nice crown on that field. The grass actually looks better than here on the Does it? I was going to ask is it, is it real grass or is that artificial turf? No. It, it's real? It's looking... No, it's, it's real. That's, well, I, I'd prefer real grass. I mean, I know I know just about any player you talk to, though. The thing with that artificial grass is those little rubber balls that they have that, that are making it softer, they get everywhere. They get down your pants, they get in your cleats, somehow they wind up in your socks, <laughs> in your underoos. I mean, my, they just go everywhere. Of course, that, that's if you're getting put on your butt a lot, which 
Yeah. I know a little bit about, I suppose. Well, they, they put that, uh, took the gravel out of the uh, playgrounds in Fort Morgan School District and put in uh, rubber, ground-up yeah. rubber. Yeah. Well, when it's 90 degrees out, it's about, uh, yeah, the kids were getting burned. Nobody and, wants to go play on that. <laughs> and they must have brought a cheap brand because... It had wire in it, and the kids were like oh. cuckleburs. Oh, man. <laughs> that was miserable. <laughs> Couldn't get rid of that stuff fast enough. Yeah, cook the kids and uh, give them stickers. Second half kickoff just about underway. Number nine for the Bulldogs, Creighton Siza, lined up. Going to kick it off from the 40, going north to south. Gets a good kickoff down to about the 10-yard line. It's going to take a bounce. Kyle Wellen's going to pick it up about the five. Oh, that gonna was. Pick and choose his way. Gets pushed down right at about the 20-yard line. He wanted that thing to roll into the end zone, but he it kicked did. back a little bit. He had to grab it. He did. He got up about 12, 15 yards there. Yeah, let's see where they play. Kind of a heads-up play by him. That could have been a wreck. They're going to place this about 20-yard line. Right on the 20. Far hash. His Hondo hope. trots in. Let's see if they can't get Kyle Wellen going again. Had two big carries there early on in the first quarter and haven't heard much from him since. Should be teeing in on Nick yeah. Wellen, you would think, if you're the Bulldogs. See if we can't get the other Wellen involved a little bit more. Bulldogs got that 300-pounder and that 275 right there in the way. Right on cue, I think the first play is a tight handoff to Kyle Wellen. Yeah, that looked like uh, Mario Garza in on a tackle, going to 275, and Noah Freeze. Number 75, six foot 305. They didn't move very much. Two new offensive linemen are going to check in for the diggers. That's Coach Swint keeping his guys fresh again. Got 10 2 coming in. We'll bring out uh, Jesus Ar Argoth. Got to get that right. And uh, Servando Herrera. They're going to go two wide here, one to the far, one to the near side, tight formation. Hondo under center again. He's going to turn around and have an inside handoff to Nick Well. Nick Well is going to turn, get down close to the 30-yard line. This should be third and short. He's going to, should pick up about nine yards there. Kind of rolled over a little bit late, but I think the player for uh, Alliance kind of lost his balance, rolled over the top of him, kind of mashed his... A face guard into the grass there a little bit. That's always nice. Always got to appreciate that. Yeah. Third and very short. About the ball length to get the first down. Just short of the 30. We're going to go two wide again. Escalante to the far side. I believe it's Cardenas to the near. Tight formation again. We're going to do that inside handoff and Bulldogs. Ooh, nothing there. Out. They that may out. have got the first down. Real fast. They're stepping right on the 30 and I... They're moving the chains. That's yeah, going to be a first chain down. guys are moving. Must have gave him forward progress. Oh, because he didn't. He didn't go very far. <laughs> he, I know that. We're going to mark him down got, for a one-yard carry. Yeah, one yard. Well, actually, one ball length, but that's yep. a, first down, irregardless. Already so, ten minutes left in the third quarter. Caden Swint's in there to the near side. Ball on the 30 yard line of the Brushby Diggers. Gable Rich is going to go in motion left to right. Hondo's going to drop back to pass. He's got a long ways to throw. Luke Seawald is going to oh. be wide open at about the 45 yard line and drops the pass. Hondo had pressure coming in, threw it just a hair behind him, still hit Seawald in the hands. That kind of looked like that touchdown play just going the opposite direction. And well, Seawald had his guy beat coming across the field from that tight end position. Braden Palmer had uh, Hondo in his sights. A <laughs> six-four player, he looked like he's going to get smothered there, and he got the ball out into Seawald's hands, but maybe a little too hard. I don't know. That was a tough one. He was open. It's going to be second and ten now from the thirty-yard line. Going to go Hunter Dunn split out wide left. Got a little double tight inside. Huh? Well, he's going to drop back to pass again. Going to look for Krieger. Ooh, and that's setting up a screenplay, but. Not very good blocking. No, offensive lineman kind of missed her assignment there. Krieger gets blasted at about the 25-yard line. They're going to mark it, call it the 26. Loss of five yards. Here, full short, uh, 5'11", 165-pounder in on a tackle along with the uh, big 75, Noah Freeze. Fresh beat diggers going the wrong way. And they got a third and really long. We're going to go two wide again. Caden Schwent 
to the left side. Honda's going to take the snap under center and drop back again. Looking for his man right in the middle. It's not going to be enough for the first down, but it's going to gain a lot of that back. That was number 80, Escalante. Ran what looked like an option route. Got to sit down right in the middle of the field. They're going to place it at about the 39-yard line. Yeah, they got to get to the 40. The middle of the 40. <laughs> they started at the middle of the 30. The middle of the ball on the 40. We got to get it there. Yvonne Cardenas out here warming up. I haven't called his name all game. He's played a lot in the first two games. And They're going to try a quarterback sneak. Yeah, and I don't think Honda's going to get it. Doesn't look like it does. Far judge. He looks like he's running down on the 40 well, yard the, line. The near side guys right here. White Hat's going to call it a first down. They got it. That's another one of those one yard rushes <laughs> for the first down. That's what's important. So now we're just on the other side of the 40 yard line now. Rush Beat Diggers moving the ball slowly but surely. Kyle Wellen and Eric Gable Risch are going to check into the game for the Rush Beat Diggers. And Hondo is going to trot off. What? Yep. And that who, never happens. Uh, uh, so now Almost. playing quarterback, I can't. I couldn't even tell you. I don't know. Cardenas is probably why he was warming up. He's the backup quarterback. He's in the center. No, no that's keeper. Kyle, that's Kyle Wellen who took the snap under center. Uh, nothing doing there. Yeah, nothing doing there. Let's see, he's at 29 on a tackle. That'll be uh, Logan... Lee Stritz. Got some interesting names up there. Now Kyle Wellen is going to limp off field a little bit. So there's your backup quarterback coming off field. Your starting quarterback, Hondo, is going to check back into the game now. <laughs> we'll bring Escalante with him. Rish is also out. Hunter Dunn to the next near side. This is that slot back to the near side. I was going to drop back. Oh, to wide open. Can. He's got Escalante wide open in the plus territory. Nice pack, clean pass, wide open. Chase King came up and uh, took Escalante down. Uh, King from the Bulldogs, but he takes into Bulldog territory at 41. About a 20-yard completion there. It's going to be at the 41 of Bulldogs. Escalante, Good. nice concentration there. He had a defensive back bearing down on him right before he caught that way to focus on the ball and get ready to take the hit. Great protection for Hondo on that one. He's going to send Gable Risch in motion from left to right. Now he's going to fake the pitch and inside handoff to Nick Wellen. Nick Wellen's got room to run. Nick Wellen is going to get down all the way to about the 12-yard line. Nice 30-yard rush got, by Nick Wellen. There's a great play design there. We've got a track down there by uh, number 64, Braden Palmer. Great he effort. tried to throw Wellen down and kind of missed and hit down hard. Right on his back and head, so I hope he can, yeah, he's lining up again, but he's a little slow to get up. Great vision by Nick Wellen. Started up the middle and broke it out to the left side. Another one of those sticking his foot in the ground. That little pass and loosen things up a little bit. They're oh, going right, to they're gonna give it right back to Nick Wellen. Nick oh. Wellen's going to take the hit, lose the football, and the Bulldogs are going to recover it on their five own yard five line. yard line. It'll be uh, Roman Garza. Junior 5'8", 140. It was a good hard hit there that popped that ball. It was it set it to six. Something you don't see from Nick Wellen hardly at all. It's no. Rare turnover. That was a hard hit. Cardina still warming up on the sidelines. I don't wonder if he was the one getting rolled out earlier. Maybe cramping up again. Okay. So here we are, two split wide either side for the Bulldogs. Quarterback DeBray is going to take the snap under oh, center. nothing do it. <laughs> Turn around and hand off at Nick Wellen. Nick Wellen, I think, is kind of mad. He's, there was a lot of hate in that tackle. <laughs> Jace Krieger was right on top, and Wellen was underneath. <laughs> they're going to lose the yard for the Bulldogs. So now they're at five-yard line. About a second and 11. Back See, 526 to go here in the uh, third period. Still 7-7. Seven, seven. Still 7-7. Seven, seven. Bulldogs taking the time, making the play call. They're going to go two split out wide, one to either side again. This time, DeBray's going to be out of the shotgun, two backs in the backfield. He's going to take the snap. He's going to look for his receiver, and he wants to run, and he does. He breaks out to the left. He's going to get all the way out to the 20-yard line. 
little pick up the first down, a 15-yard rush by number 20 Dubray for the Alliance Bulldogs. Pete Digger was there. He faked one way and went the other, and the Pete Digger caught a lot of air, and they get a first down. That's the second 15-yard rush by Dubray, dropping back to pass. They're not designed rushes, but when he improvises, he can pick up a lot of yards in a hurry. Now they can go back to their three wide, two to the near, one to the far. Dubray's going to be under center in the eye formation. He's going to turn around and hand it off to number 40 again. He's going to pick up about two yards. A little short of the 25-yard uh, line. Nick Wellen on tackle. <laughs> it's a little help up. I pick number 62 from the Bulldogs, and I don't have a player with number 62. Got two rosters here. Maybe there's another one. I don't have a 62 for the Bulldogs either. Nope, not on either roster. Got one off of Max Preps and the other one from John. Two wide left, one wide right. Snap under center. Oh. And they oh. lost the ball too. I do believe Dubray jumped back on it but had a fumble on the handoff there. Kind of got tied up. Volcourt uh, didn't get the handoff very good and dropped it. That's going to help the brush speed diggers now. They're going to be third and long. Call it about third and 12 for the Bulldogs from inside their own 20-yard line. Call it the 19. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Bulldogs try one of those screen plays again. Look for Dubray to tuck it and run again. A little confusion on the defense for the beat diggers. He's going to take the shotgun snap and look to pass. He's going to air it out for number two down the sideline. And he had to dive and had it, lost it, had it again, and lost it. At the last moment, one of the beat diggers, I, I'm not sure if that was 14, Luke Seewald. Kind of did a bum rush uh, from the left side, cut it up the field right around a blocker and was right in his face. I'm not sure if that was Seewald or somebody else, but they put a... A lot of pressure on him, just he threw the ball. Enough pressure to make him overthrow it. If he'd have thrown it just a hair shorter, that's probably a touchdown for the Bulldogs. Instead, they're going to have to punt from about the 10-yard line and a booming kick. It's going to bounce out at about the 45, 43-yard line of the Brush Beat Diggers. Nice kick. Big right. rush by the Beat Diggers, but uh, not quite quick enough for that. Okay, still 7-7. Seven, seven. Three minutes to go here in the second period. Creighton Siza having nice kicks for the Bulldogs thus far. And here's what's kind of crazy. Creighton Siza, kicker 6'1", junior, 165. They're saying he weighs the same as big number 40. I just don't believe that at all. <laughs> 40, I think, is a little heavier than that. Maybe it's all shoulder pads. Maybe. He's got one of those bigger shoulder pads and a neck brace underneath. Definitely makes him look bigger. But he I still think he's north here to 43. Going to turn around and hand it off to Nick Wellen. Nick Wellen's going to skirt around the outside. No telling where he went out of bounds. He could pick up anywhere from five to eight yards there. I think he's going to be real close to the first down. See where they put that foot down inside of uh, inside Bulldog the, territory. Called 49 yard line. I think seven. The beat digger started that drive at their own 43. Eight yard rush by Nick Wellen. Nick Wellen stacking up the yards again. Of course he's. Helped himself by having his 10th Gary be a 30-yard scamper earlier in the quarter. Hondo's going to take the, the snap and turn around and pitch it to the right. Jace Krieger on Jace the Krieger. carry. He's going to pick up about four yards and a beat digger first down. He can put his foot in the ground, too, and cut up there. He, missed it. Yeah, he had to. Bulldog defensive end was bearing down on him. Up under the that is the first carry for number 34, Jace Krieger. And it's a big one. Four first, yards and a first down. First and ten for the Diggers. Getting a short time here in the uh, second period. Two minutes to go. And 45 oh, we might go all the way. Oh, Nick Wellen down the right sideline. He's got one man to beat, and he's going to do it. Nick Wellen, a 45-yard <laughs> touchdown scamper off the right side. How about that? So maybe the beat diggers are wearing them down. He went. He always goes up the middle. This time he went around the end. Probably what the Bulldogs were expecting—an up the middle run. And Nick Wellen able to put his foot in the ground once again and bust out to the right side and pick up a big touchdown at one minute and 50 seconds left in the third period. Beat diggers going to try the extra point. Again, I apologize. Number 40 is the kicker for the beat diggers. I don't have a name, but. 
Had two really nice kicks so far. That one's going to be good. 14-7, to seven, third quarter. Rushby Diggers like ahead of the Lions Bulldogs. That play kind of came out of nowhere. <laughs> good blocking on that right side. and Well, it can pick him up and put him down. I thought he was going to get cut off, and they, they couldn't catch up with him. Number 12 for the Bulldogs, Chase King, was playing that safety position and was trying, like, giving it all he could and just couldn't catch Nick Welling. So the beat diggers are going to kick off here. With 149 left in the uh, third period. Get a swap ends. 14 7 for the beat diggers. Bulldogs are coached by Chris Seabon. Don't know. Yeah, he's been coaching for a few years up there. Going to kick off on the far left hash. Number 40. Not very big. Number he's got 40 a good fit, big foot. From the uh -oh. 40, and this one's going to go out of bounds. We're going to throw the flag. Went out at about the 15-yard line. It's going to give good field position to uh, the Lions. Big Meyer Phillips Insurance. Things happen in life. Make sure you're prepared with the right insurance coverage. Big Meyer Phillips Insurance in Brush and Fort Morgan. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty. Bulldogs are going to get about the best starting field position they've had all game. Start at their own 35-yard line. That's going to be a 20-yard penalty. I apologize. Caesar Hinojos lines up defensive end on the far side for the Diggers. They come right at him. Oh, nice Randolph. cutback. That 40 is tough. He is tough to bring down. Listed at 165. I do not believe that one bit. That was more like five yards in a cloud of dust for or six. <laughs> Started at 35, and he's out across the uh, 41 there. So Six-yard carry. Second down and four. We're going to go two wide right again, one wide left, shotgun snap for Dubray. He's going to turn around and fake the handoff and roll right, looking for a pass. Doesn't have any, but he's going to cut back to the Ooh, left. there's a clip. He's going to cut back to the left, scamper at about the 40-yard line. Ooh. Oh, I should say a push in the back. They didn't catch that one. Uh, I saw exactly what you were looking at, and I thought they threw a flag, but they didn't. That'll be a big pickup there for the quarterback. About a 20-yard gain for Dubray. Rush Beat Digger's doing a really good job in the back end of their defense. Dubray's just kind of sneaky. Well, they had a big rush from the uh, left side of their defense, but uh, he cut to the, or excuse me, the right side, and he cut to the left side. Shotgun snap again. He's going to hand it off. Number 29 this time. 29's going to try and scamper out. He's going to get wrapped up by the ankle, be brought down at about the 45-yard line. Five yards there by uh, Logan Lee Stritz. 5'11, 195. Give him six yards. It's his second carry of the game. 15 yards on the night for Lee Stritz. 39 yard line of the Brush Speed Diggers. Speed Diggers changing up here a little bit. Kyle Wellen comes in on defense. Second five, four and a half. We're going to go two wide left, one wide right. Two running backs in the backfield. Dubray's going to take the shotgun snap again. Turn around, fake the handoff. Going to look for the slant route. Number 12 is going to go ahead and catch that. Chase King going to pick up the first down. Oh, one of the beat there is Escalante's slow to get up. Uh, he's laying on the ball, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Coach is going to take take him out. We're going to send Ivan Cardenas out. Yeah, we're going to get a timeout here. Oh, it's in the quarter. Okay. Three figures 14 7. That is the end of the third quarter. We'll take a quick 30 second break. Come right back on 1010 KSIR on the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, to 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Tyler Carmen alongside Rob Hastings tonight. 14-7, to 7, getting ready to kick off the fourth quarter of the Brush Beat Diggers hosting the Alliance Bulldogs. 
Willow Coffee and Bake Shop. Get a delicious treat, breakfast or lunch option to make the day better. 921 Edison Street in Brush today. Beat Diggers on defense, first and 10 from about the 28-yard line. Dubray's going to take the shotgun snap. Turn oh, nice hit. job, nice job. Oh. Get dropped. <laughs> Good right job. in, right in for the brush beat diggers. If I can get a number for him, Caesar Hernandez, I Caesar think. Hernos 52. 52, yes. That's yeah. going to be a huge loss. Dubray had a man open, didn't see him coming across from left to right. I think he did that plant his foot and got by the uh, defender who was right in front of him and right in the quarterback's chest. A lot of young quarterbacks make that mistake instead of stepping up in the pocket when they feel pressure. They do what Dubray did right there and just keep losing ground and losing ground and cost him eight yards. Second and 18 for the Bulldogs. We're going to hand it off to 40 around the right side. And there's going to be a nice, nice tackle. tackle. It's got to be Nick Wellen, I believe. Mm, somebody's a little uh, tackler's laying down over there. That was not Nick Wellen. Give we'll you call a number. It short time out here, injury time. I'm not sure who was on that tackle. but Fitting here, Colorado Plains Medical Center. CPMC's experienced physicians and highly trained staff make your hometown hospital the place for expert quality care. CPMC helping communities thrive. Both teams are going to take a knee. Injured bee diggers on the far side of the field. Looks like they're just trying to stretch him out. Coach Swint, uh, Megan slowly across the way. <laughs> he looks like his knees hurt a little bit too. He's too young for that. I would agree, but I'm sure he would say otherwise. Uh, well, yeah. So the brush bee diggers finally getting over their second half woes, scoring the first points of any second half this year out of their three games and now coach Swint's going to make his way all the way back across the field <laughs> not too fast he, not too worried about his player no I think it looks like he's just cramping up it's like stretching him out over there uh, maybe I got a moment while he comes across the field to mention Chad Freehoff former beat digger was named to the Armac Hall of Fame that was back in 2013 he won the Harlan Hill Trophy which is like the Heisman for Division 2 amazing uh, deal just Google Chad Freehoff and check out all his great stuff. I mean, he played for the Broncos for one preseason game. Uh, several other uh, smaller teams, Canada and around. Okay, we're set to go. Kyle Wellen was the injured beat digger on the play. He's made his way back cross field now on the sideline. Bulldogs are going to take the shotgun snap again. Bray's going to roll out to his left. He's going to step up and heave it down the field. He's going to overthrow everybody. Dang near throw it out of the end zone. Moriarty about the closest one to that ball. I believe his intended receiver was number eight. The ball was about uh, 40 yards. Connor Frayer. Uh, long and about 20 yards across the field. Yeah. <laughs> he had a pretty good arm there. Almost as good as that young kid that was playing at halftime who was hooking it all over the field like he was Patrick Mahomes, I swear. <laughs> Boy, he was he was getting, getting the guys were catching him too. I don't know who they were, but little beat diggers. Now uh, the Bulldogs are going to line up to punt again. This is from Beat Digger 40, and he's going to go ahead and punt it right into the end zone. That's going to be a touchback. 20-yard punt. That's, Clayton Sizes has got quite that's a That's a net going. anyway. The Beat Diggers will get to take the field at the 20, 10-39 left. Beat Diggers in the lead, 14-7. See if they can get a drive going. Morgan Community College, MCC, is there to make your dreams become a reality for both traditional and non-traditional students. Check them out at morgancc.edu. Seen big Josh Cantu coming in on offense, uh, along with Servando Her Herrera. You know, get their place in the line. Take uh, Melvin Hernandez, I think, is out to the left side. He's going to turn around. Do an inside handoff to the Krieger, I would imagine. That is number 34, Jace Krieger. Number 75, Noah Freeze got an ankle on the way by and then got a lot of help from his buddies. Krieger's going to pick up about one yard. Jesus Acosta was in on a tackle, too, for Alliance. And don't forget, you can uh, pick us up on uh, KSIR.com. Haven't talked about that much, but my wife's listening there on 1010. Beat diggers are going to go one wide right, two tight end. Hondo under center is going to turn around, hand it to Nick Wellen. Nick Wellen's going to turn for close to eight yards. Looks like he's going to be just short. I think he's got it. That crown's throwing us off again. That is, that is throwing me off. It is going to be a first down. First and ten diggers. Nice run by Wellen. 
He doesn't he doesn't go down for those arm tackles. Got bounced around a little and kept driving. Hunter Dunn's gonna bring in the play. Move out here to the near side. Ball set at the 31 yard line. First and ten diggers. Nick Wellen with that nine yard carry has got over 135 yards on the night. We're gonna turn around and pitch it to the right side and it's going nowhere. Nothing doing. It'll be a big loss there on that. Krieger's going to lose about three yards on that failed attempt. Jesus cost out in on a tackle again with a lot of help from Palmer and several other guys in those white jerseys, gray pants, and the blue numbers. Nine yeah. minutes left already in the fourth quarter. After that three-yard loss. They're lucky that's all it was. Hunter Dunn's going to split out wide left. Tight formation. Hondo takes a snap, turns around, and hands it off to Wellen. Wellen's going to... Pick up maybe the three yards they lost. Going to be down right about the 30-yard line. Big Noah frees it on the tackle again. Yeah, Mario Garza also, 77. I think had him down by the ankles. That's a lot of big guys to get out of the way. Yeah, I'd be running outside. <laughs> That's what I would do. Try that play again. Huh? Yep. He triggers from the near side hash marks this time. Hondo's going to drop back to pass here on third and long. And oh. Oh, he had him open, Jace Krieger, down to the middle of the field, running a seam route. Number 13 for the Bulldogs, Carson. Case and Clark. Yeah, Case and Clark. That's just six. made an amazing play. He all, needed all that 6-4 because that ball was going to drop in there to the receiver, and he tipped it away. 6-4 and every bit of fingernail he didn't chew off earlier in the day helped him break up that pass. Fourth and 11 for the beat diggers. <coughs> I think it's Chase King setting up deep about his own 35 yard line. See if number 40 for the brush beat diggers again. We don't have a, a name for number 40. See how good of a putt he can get off here. He's putting into the wind just a little bit, just a light breeze. And this one's uh -oh. going to go a mile high. But not drop very deep. Right at the 50 yard line, but going to get a nice bounce. Going to come to rest at about the 44 of the Alliance Bulldogs territory. Yeah, I'll have to. Listen to Paula Costa next to us. Guess what? He's 50 years old today. Yeah, the cheerleaders had a very, very nice and thoughtful uh, sign and cheer for him earlier. I believe it said, Happy 50th, Paul. Man, you're old. <laughs> Just, I know. It's not fair, though. He doesn't even have a gray hair in his head. <laughs> Just a great, a great gesture by the brush cheerleaders on behalf of Paul Costa. Bulldogs starting this drive. Seven minutes, 50 seconds left. They're going to turn around and pitch it. To the right side, number 40, that's Falkart again. He's going to turn the corner and pick up about five yards. He's going to stay inbounds. Clark's going to run. Clark's going to be... Maybe even a little more. Clark's going to be the best friend for these beat diggers here as long as they have the lead. Say the running clock's running inside of seven and a half minutes to go. Going to give Falkart another six yards on that. Carry balls right at the 50-yard line. Clock still winding. Seven minutes and 15 seconds now. Kind of a little slow getting started here. They better hurry. Two wide left. They're going to go tight end down on the left as well. I formation, turn around and hand it off. Number four, he's going to come off the Good left side. Good here. He's going to break several tackles and get down almost to the 30-yard line. About a 20-yard carry for number 40, Fulkart. Just a wave of blockers and no beat diggers. Yeah, they went heavy on that left side and ran a stretch play that way and just not enough. Not enough defenders on that side of the ball for the diggers. Josh Cantu is in on a tackle, but he's way downfield there. They're going to go the exact same formation, just flip to the right side now. Right in the middle of the hashes, they're going to hand it off. And he's going to cut inside this time, number 40 full card is. He's going to pick up about three yards there. Yeah. Well and on the tackle, that's Kyle. Maybe Nick was helping him out. Number 40, full card for the Bulldogs by far. They're leading rusher 12 carries tonight, over 50 yards unofficially. Clock still winding, coming down on six minutes in the fourth quarter. Bulldogs threatening inside beat digger territory, inside the 30-yard line. They're going to go shotgun again. And there's a oh, there's motion there. The flight comes out. Quarterback got a little anxious. I don't know what he was doing. He ran forward and they hiked the ball right to him in the shotgun. Should be a false start. It was a completed pass to yeah. King number twelve that went for a couple yards. He broke a tackle and was 
brought down fairly quickly, but he should be a false start here. Should be backing him up five yards. Yeah, he went in motion so now forward. Be, still should remain second down, and they're going to be about second and call it 12 there. That's the second time that there's been some snap miscommunication between the Bulldog quarterback and center. Chase Krieger jogged out there to work on the defense. They're going to keep the clock routing now, under six minutes. They're going to go two wide left and a tight end on the left again. High formation, fullback running back behind. Dubray's under center. They're going to pitch it to the left. Nick Wellens right there. He's going to go ahead and ride him out of bounds. Only going to be about a two-yard pickup. Kyle Wellen got a shot on him, too. <laughs> right, right at the out-of-bounds marker. Beat Diggers did a good job just stretching that play to the sideline, not letting 40 turn up field. Of course, he doesn't like to turn up field when he's going one direction. That's just the direction he's going. Better get there before he does. Yeah, no gain on the play. Third and ten. Now the Bulldogs are going to split two out to the right, two out to the left. and going to go shotgun, one running back next to Dubray in the backfield. Dubray's going to step up in the pocket and gets hit. Oh. Got the pass off, but it was a wounded duck. That was oh, crazy. man, it was floating up there for a long time. Nobody was close to it. Fortunately though. for him, no diggers in the area. Fortunately for the diggers, there, there was just yeah. no, no guys in white uniforms there either. So now here they've got a fourth and ten from the 32-yard line. They're going to split two wide to either side again. Fulkart's going to be next to Dubray in the backfield out of the shotgun. Takes the snap. Drops back, steps up in the pocket. Looks right across the middle and throws it behind his receiver. The receiver had to come back. Could not make the catch and then he took a shot. That big, nasty shot from Caden Moriarty. That's how you play that defensive back position, Moriarty. I think those receivers pay coming across the middle like that. Dubray leaving his receiver kind of hung out to dry there. Yeah, for it. In a sissy league, they would have thrown a flag for that. Yep, yep. In a no-fun league. <laughs> NFL. I don't know. They some of the strangest calls last weekend. Thrown a flag and been fine. So Brush B Diggers are going to take over on downs. 5.18 left in the fourth quarter. Hondo under center. Tight formation again. Going to do an inside handoff. It's going nowhere. Well, and of course, they're going to start at the 33-yard uh, line. 32, I guess, is what they get on the scoreboard. We'll go with that one. Speaking of the no fun league, I heard that on the radio today, that accepted penalties, not just penalties thrown, but accepted penalties are up 60% compared to this time last year. Most penalties accepted since 1947. It's been a ridiculous weekend, what little bit I've watched. Yeah. Weekends. Beat Diggers letting the clock run. Oh, we get a flag. Might have let it run too much there. Lance Swint is not happy. They're going to go delay a game against the Brush Beat Diggers. I could probably tell you why Lance Swint is not happy, because when the the, when the yeah. team is when the team is starting to uh, run the clock down like that, high schools don't have play clock. So what they do is, is when the play clock gets under 10 seconds, the back judge, the white hat, he's going to start saying counting down 10, 9, 8, so the quarterback can hear it. So really there should be no excuse for there to be a delay game in a situation like this. But either oh, way, fumble. Either yeah, the beat diggers are going to give it up. They give it up. Fumble on the handoff again. You don't see that very often between uh, Hondo and Wellen, but it happened that time. They're going to turn it over. Wellen will probably take the fall for both fumbles, but th that could have been the quarterback. So the Bulldogs are going to take over at the 33-yard line of the brush beat diggers. A great field position. Let's see what they can do with it here. The yeah, beat diggers still lead with 4-12 left. 14 to 7 for the Diggers. They're going to go two split out left and a tight end on the left as well. Take a guess at which way they're going. They're going up the left side. That's full court number 40. He's going to pick up about 13 yards. We brought down right at the 20 yard line. 13th carry for 13 yards. Give him about. Almost nine yards, call it eight probably. Those are the ball on the 20. 
85 yards unofficially for Fulkert on the night on 13 carries. We're going to flip the formation again. We're going to power right. Fulkert's going to try and go that way. And Not much there, but a first down, I believe. Yep, first and 10 for the Bulldogs. Clock winding, 3.30 and counting. They're still with a seven-point lead. But Bulldogs threatening. I think they found the formation they like, that power right bring in. Two wide receivers to the left. He's going to turn around and hand it to full court again. He's Good. going nowhere. He's stacked up in the middle. Big guy in the center got him. Let's see. Nick Wellen, pick number 79, coming off the bottom of the pile is Joshua Cantu. Second and nine from the, call it 16-yard line. Clock still running. Two minutes, 45 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Look. Confusion there. <laughs> well, the players come off the bench and didn't, didn't go to the huddle. He just lines up over to the right side. We go two wide right, one wide left. Two running backs in the backfield with Dubray. He's going to take the shotgun snap, fake the handoff. He's going to throw that screen play. Level screen, good blocking on that, and it's going to be a first down. I think You're close to it. Down about the five yard. No, it's going to mark it down at the seven. Number eight, eight, Bulldogs. eight yard line. Buried her. Third and one. Clock still winding, just under two minutes. See if the diggers can't get a big stop here. About their turn for a turnover. That sounds really good. He's going to take the shotgun snap again, Dubray. He's probably going to. Gonna I was going to hand it off. off. Fulkert. Fulkert's going to do the Fulkert thing. Three yards in a cloud of dust, but he's going to pick up the first down. It's going to be first and goal inside the five yard line. Or right at the five yard line, I should say. Clock's still running. Minute and a half now. Bulldogs making sure they got the right play. They're in no hurry. Got to think that if they score here, imagine they'll go for two, try to put this game away. He's going to go one wide right tight end, or two wide right tight end to the left. He's going to throw that screen pass, and the receiver's going to drop it. Took his eyes off it to see Gable Rich coming at him and drop the ball. So that's going to stop the clock at a minute six. It's going to be second and goal from the five for the Bulldogs. With one minute, six seconds left in the ball game. Changing up a couple players, putting another lineman in there. On the Bulldogs, I got to be thinking I'm handing it off to 40. Give him three cracks to get five yards. You're going to put big 73 in the back backfield. <laughs> I wondered what was going on there. He's a pullback. Hand it to 40. He's... Oh, right. Almost the goal line. They're going to mark him down at the one-yard line. That's a four-yard rush. With one minute to go. Uh, the clock is running. 49 seconds. Counting. Totally set up real close to the line of scrimmage. They're going to run that same formation. 73 is the fullback. Turn around. Keeper. Quarterback, keeper, it's going to be a touchdown for the Alliance Bulldogs. One yard rush by DuGray for the touchdown. Now the question for them with 35 seconds left, do you kick the field goal or do you go for two? And they're bringing out their, their extra point unit. Number nine, Creighton Siza. 35.5 on the clock. Good snap. No snap. Good kick, though. They were tied up. 14-14. 35 seconds left in the fourth quarter. AC Ice, crystal clear ice, good for any drink at any time of the year. You can pick up AC Ice at any local grocery or convenience store in northeast Colorado today. That fumble by Hondo and Nick Wellen coming back to fight the diggers. Big time. Gave the Bulldogs great field position at the Digger 30. Bulldogs able to capitalize. 
Big mistake on that fumble. That, that was terrible place, terrible timing. Just a missed exchange between the quarterback and the running back. I'm not sure they were on the same play. A rare, rare mishap on the hands of Pondo and Nick Wellen. So that Krieger's going deep. Well, Kyle Wellen. Yeah. Size is going to line up to kick right from the middle of the 40-yard line. Jackson Dunker will set up at the 20. See if he kicks it long or does just a little dink kick to get us to, get us to overtime. He yep. kicks it, a little pooch it down. Kick. I believe that Jackson Dunker are going to pick it up. He's going to, oh, get, he's to, he's going to get to about the 30. Forward progress might have got him to the 35-yard line. I guess who took him down with one hand? <laughs> Eric Volkart. <laughs> yep. Volkart doing a little bit of everything for the Bulldogs tonight. Kick return, not four seconds off the clock. 31 seconds left for the Bulldogs. They're going to be at the 34-yard line. Hondo's had some great passes today. But <laughs> like to been see right that. on at times. I'd like to see that post route to Seawald again from a tight end position. Seawald's on the right side right now. There's a receiver split out wide and left. He's going to drive back to pass. He's going to have to scramble to his right. Still looking, still looking. Hucks it deep for Ooh. Dunn, number 33. And Dunn's looking for a penalty. He's not going to get it. <laughs> Great way to extend the play from Montes yeah. Garcia, but knocked oh. almost 10 seconds off the clock. 22 seconds left for the Diggers now. Defender was just right going for the ball. I think it was pretty good defensive play on his part. That'll stop the clock here. 22.6 seconds. The Tiggers need about a 67 yards in the, for a touchdown. Tiggers should have at least two timeouts remaining. Rondo's going to drop back. He's going to have to scramble again. There's going to be a hold there on the Diggers and number 79. Uh -oh. Joshua Cantu is going to get called for a hold there. Hondo just ended up having to run out of bounds. 16 seconds left now. Flag sitting at the 25-yard line. This is going to march them all the way back to the 15 Ooh, that well, was from the point of the foul, so yeah. <laughs> so now we've inside got, the 15, or right on the 15. Now we got 85 yards in 16 seconds. Crazier things have happened, I suppose. Second little 85. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to turn around and the inside handoff. They should just let this clock run. They are. They're going to let the clock run, and they're going to take it to overtime. Well, it's been a long time since we had an overtime game. I can't remember, to be honest with you. The clock's hit zero on the scoreboard. End of the fourth quarter. Score is tied 14-14. to We're going to take a quick 30-second break. We'll come right back on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network with the overtime period between the Brush Beat Diggers and the Alliance Bulldogs. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, to 1010 KSIR, KSIR.com, and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Tyler Carver alongside Rob Hastings, and we've got a overtime period fixing the kickoff here between the Brush Beat Diggers and the Alliance Bulldogs. Bulldogs were able to capitalize on a handoff exchange that resulted in a fumble at the Beat Digger 30-yard line with about a minute and a half left. Bulldogs were able to march down and score a touchdown. Kick the extra point to tie it up at 14-14, and that's where we stand now. Well, well, we've got a mo moment before they go out to the uh, coin toss. Bradley Bass is a new athletic director this year, former beat digger. And our assistant coaches, Larry Mills, Ace Wellen, Travis Lefevre. And there's a big guy out there. Tyrone Whipple's out on the sidelines tonight. So, an old face they haven't seen much of lately. Okay. Gotta give a shout out to Marla Tappy. I see rolling the brush sideline as well, helping out. Many players who might think they might be injured or cramping up or general health questions. Marla does a great job. Brush captain's out for the uh, overtime 
coin toss. Escalante, uh, Hunter Dunn, and our mystery guy, number 40. We've got to get that fixed. We do have to get that fixed because he's played a pretty important part as far as kicking goes for tonight's game. 21st Century Equipment. All the John Deere equipment for your operation is at 21st Century Equipment in Sterling and Fort Morgan. Okay, it looks like Alliance has won the toss. Had a long discussion out there, probably explaining the overtime rules. Probably. Mm-hmm. Just a reminder, Colorado Prep's scoreboard show with Kevin Schaefer will air at 9.30 on 1010 KSR following Rush Beat Digger football during the 2019 season. Do you well, know we might be getting into his time if <laughs> this overtime because we're pushing 9 o'clock. Do you know the rules for high school overtime, Rob? Is it kind of like college? Each team gets a. I think it's pretty much that way. I I need to read up on that. I do too. I didn't even didn't even think about it. The Bulldogs are going to start from the ten yard line. It's going to be first and goal. Going to turn around and hand it off to Folkart. Folkart's going to make a little bit of a juke move. He's going to pick up about five yards. They're down there pretty hard. <laughs> uh, he comes right off his back. When his teammates picked him up. Big number 64. Some 40 and 64 all night. But, uh, Braden Palmer, the 6'4", 200-pounder, just picked him up by the shoulder pads and set him on his feet. What a teammate. I formation going to turn around, hand it off, and Cesar Nils going to make a nice tackle with the kid. Uh, Hunter Dunn in on that, and also Escal- or Moriarty in on that. No gain on the play. Third and goal from the five-yard line. What a good game. You hate to see it come down to the kickers, but that's exciting, too. Big play here for the Lions. As long as they haven't got a win this year, as long as there is a winner at the end, I hate when an NFL game ends in a tie. It doesn't make any sense to me. Going to line up I formation again, two split out wide left, tight end to the right. Bray under center is going to turn around and fake the handoff. He's got a man wide open in the end zone. Oh boy, that's He's going to make the catch. That was a tight end, big number. If I can see his number, twenty-three. That should be. That was a nice play. Least or no, 29 is least Street's if I could find my program here. Number 23 is Vic Hinojosa. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I apologize, folks. Hinosa. Hinosa. Maybe. Victor. Either way, big touchdown catch here. And first attempt at overtime. Size is going to line up and drill the extra point. Put it right through there. Give the, give the score 21 14. Coming from behind now is the Lions. And in the first overtime. The Bulldogs are running down to the other end of the field, but that's not how this works, I guess. Each team gets the ball at the north end zone. Beat Diggers will now have to at least score a touchdown to force another overtime period. Hondo heads out, no huddle. And we got one too many one too many beat diggers out there. They didn't have a huddle, so I guess we won't get in trouble for twelve men there. Now they need him. We're short one guy. Beat diggers might have to call a timeout here. And Coach Swades has got to t- they are call Coach a timeout. Going to have to call a timeout. What's going on here? <laughs> We're short alignment. This brush speed digger timeout is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. That like good neighbor Greg Mullen and his team are there to make the insurance world easy for you. Call them at 842-4555. Ishmael Hernandez is coming off the bench. Uh, mistakes have really hurt the beat diggers this year. Of course, they're pretty young. They didn't play. A lot of them didn't play a lot last year. So 
they are young. Two fumbles, the one late in the fourth really cost them thus far. Lions Bulldogs up 21 to 14. They scored on their first overtime possession. Beat Diggers first play of theirs. They're going to do an inside handoff to Nick Wallen. Nick Wallen's going to gain maybe a yard. Going to be second and nine. Big rush of white jerseys there. It's about time for Hondo to make that little roll. Yep. A little, maybe run play action here. Yeah, a little. Put it in Wellen's gut and then uh, peel off the, to this side. Coach Mills on the sideline. That I'm surprised he hasn't carried it once. Of course, he got a little boogered up in that Fort Morgan game too. Yeah. Though. May not want to run. Going to go tight formation again. Hunter Dunn split out wide left. Here's that play action. Hondo's got to run. He's going to find Jace Krieger. Jace Krieger's going to get down to about the three-yard line. Pitch and catch there. Hondo had a run for his life. Makes a nice throw on the run. So now it's going to be third and goal from about the three-yard line. The brush beat diggers have to score here. Not only have to score a touchdown, but have to kick the extra point successfully as well to force another overtime period. Caden Swint in with the play. Oh, nope, he's coming off. Oh, no. Oh, Coach Swint's not happy again. <laughs> I guess in high school you can have 12 guys in the huddle. I guess. Hondo back to pass. Oh, oh throws it high, and we're going to have a flag, too. That's like not going to be good. Looks like Hondo kind of threw it away there. Let's see what the flag is here. It's a bad place for a flag, holding on to beat diggers. Flag is at about the eight yard line or so, so this is going to walk them back. It should remain third down. Now it's going to be third, third and goal from the 19 yard line. We got a four on the card out there. Yeah, the ref telling him to go ahead and change it. Should be, should remain third down. Yeah, he's playing with it. There it is. The three comes up. Hunter Dunn checks back into the game where he already is going to come off. They're going to go one wide left, one wide right. Tight formation, tight end to the right. Hondo under center. Takes the snap. He's got a clean pocket. 64 is going to run. Oh, and 64 is going to take him down at the 26-yard line. It would be a horse collar tackle in a lot of games. <laughs> he's funny like down. Grabbed, he grabbed right at the back of the jersey of Hondo and ripped him down. Hondo, not quite sure why he ran to the left there. He had a clean pocket. He needed to step up. Find a receiver downfield or either throw it away or take off running, but running to the left was not where he needed to go at all. We need one of those beat digger miracles that they've had in the past on this field. Braden Palmer playing that right end position for the Bulldogs had a big impact on this game. So here it is, fourth down on the 25 yard line. Hondo's going to lift it up for Luke Seawald. It's going to be picked off in the back of the end zone, and that should be the game. Brush beat diggers. One holding penalty set them back on their overtime possession. And the Bulldogs are going to get their first win of the season. They're going to go to 1-3 and three on the year with the 21-14 win over the Diggers. Speed Diggers are going to fall to 1-2. and two. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Tonight. Yeah, that was tough. Huh? Got talked about Chad free off, and here's his dad right here in front of us. So. <laughs> Take care, Clyde. We'll see you later. Catch you later. Okay. <laughs> Rob catching up. Yeah. Uh, we'll go. Yep. One of our, well, we got lots of great beat digger fans, and of course he is too. We'll go ahead and take a quick break, come back with a, a quick post game show. Uh, t- once again, 21 to 14, Brush Beat Diggers lose to the Alliance Bulldogs on 1010 KSIR in the Eastern Plains Sports Network. We'll be right back with the post game show. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, to 1010 KSIR, KSIR.com on the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Tyler Carlin alongside Rob Hastings. Getting ready to give you the post-game report. Your brush beat diggers fall to the Alliance Bulldogs 21-14 to in overtime. The brush beat digger post-game show is brought to you by Mr. D's Ace Home Center, proud supporter of all our area athletes. They'll serve you with all your home, farm, and ranch supplies with three locations to serve you in Sterling Brush and Fort Morgan. B-Diggers lose a heartbreaker. They had it in the bag, 14-7. to 
late in the fourth quarter until a fumble on their own 30-yard line between Montos Garcia and Nick Wellen gave the Bulldogs a great opportunity to tie it up, and they were able to take advantage of it right at the end of the fourth quarter. Bulldogs then received uh, what would be the opening possession of the overtime period. They capitalized, scored a touchdown on a nice play-action pass from the uh, one-yard line on third down, and then the feet diggers trying to come back their overtime possession fell short had a holding penalty that pushed him way back and, and uh, one last attempt at a pass was picked off in the end zone real quick your stats leaders for the brush beat diggers number 21 nick wellen he had 13 carries for 142 yards and one touchdown fortunately he had two fumbles in the game that one that previously mentioned cost uh, cost the diggers uh, field position and ended up with the Bulldogs scoring uh, Kyle Wellen two carries for 20 yards on the night Hondo had one carry netted only a yard but it was a big first down uh, receiving Luke Sewell he had two catches for 38 yards one a 30 yard touchdown reception the first touchdown of the night number 80 Escalante he had three catches for 46 yards had a 12 14 and 20 yard reception for the Alliance Bulldogs their leading rusher number 40 Folk Carried the load, 17 carries, 103 yards tonight. Number 20, Dubray, the quarterback, he rushed five times for 53 yards and a touchdown. Number 29, Leestrix had two carries for 15 yards. Number 8, uh, Ferrier for the Bulldogs was the leading receiver, three catches for 38 yards. Number 2, Swaringer, he had a 19-yard touchdown reception, his only catch of the night. Number 12, King, he had a 10-yard reception. And then number 23 for the Bulldogs, he had a 5-yard reception for a touchdown. That was the deciding score in overtime. Tough way to lose, would you say, Rob? Yeah, uh, mistakes, penalties, uh, just can't you just can't do that in a close game. Health wise, the beat diggers came out uh, a little bit better. Kyle Wellen had to be helped off the field uh, in the fourth quarter, but he returned. Um, Coach Went got to be happy with the way his guys fought. Uh, just once again, turning into the story of the season, mistakes uh, as far as penalties go. They did clean up the penalties a little bit, but holding penalties late. Don't know if that's fatigue or or what it might be, but uh, penalties costing the B-Diggers late in the game for sure. Yeah, that would be the bad part. The good parts is uh, seen a lot of improvement on the defense. Uh, the offense had some good passes, uh, pretty good blocking in a lot of times, and uh, they were going against bigger, faster guys again. Yep. And the Alliance Bulldogs had a, a bigger roster for sure, but um, B-Diggers really did fairly well defensively. Um, it wasn't until they basically gave the Bulldogs – better field position than what they should have that the Bulldogs were able to, to move the ball. Uh, they couldn't get anything going uh, if they had to start in their own territory. So kudos to the Diggers on that. But, yeah, they fall 21-14. to 14. So, Rob, do you have anything else for tonight? I don't know. Uh, just see number 40. Uh, everybody's going to see number 40 here. It could fall short. Uh, less than at 5'11", 165. I don't know. He was a load. He was a load, and he carried the load. Again, over 100 yards on 17 carries for the night. Didn't have a score, but... Man, without him, I have to wonder what the Bulldogs would have been able to do. Well, on their uh, touchdown pass in overtime, that was something they hadn't done all night. No, they, they uh, set that up. That was that was the brush beat diggers looking to stop the run by Folkart. And uh, they bit hard on the play action and let the tight end slip out. He was wide open. And, and almost then even didn't quite make a perfect throw. Tight end had to go to the ground, but nevertheless, it was a touchdown. Well, beat diggers come out st- Come out with a good, good one. Uh, 31-yard pass from uh, Altus Garcia to uh, Seawald. That came at 11.53 of the second quarter, just seven seconds in. And uh, then they got tied up. Well, the kicking was good tonight, too. Nobody missed a kick. Nobody missed a kick. Number 40 for the beat diggers made both his extra point attempts. And then number nine, Siza, uh, for the Bulldogs, made all three of his. Uh, better kicking, for sure, uh, than in the previous weeks. And then... Uh, Lions came back at uh, 7.48 of the uh, second period and tied it up with a 19-yard pass from uh, number 20. We called his names a lot tonight, too, Debray, and that went to uh, Colin Savage. Sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, that came at uh, 7.18. Trevor Dubray, 6-1. Of the second, second period. A 6-1 senior. Yeah, Dubray, too. For the uh, Bulldogs. And then in the second second half, it was uh, Nick Wellen with the uh, 45-yard run. Made it 14-7 for the beat diggers, and then uh, only 35 and a half seconds left in the game, and there was a one-yard run by, uh, again, 
by number 20, Debray. As he did the quarterback sneak for a yard, tied it up, and then, of course, the overtime pass for the win, and the extra point made it to 21-14. That's where we ended up. Tough loss for the Diggers, but something that they will definitely be able to learn something from. And I think most important thing is the light stayed on tonight, Rob. Uh, yeah, I... I, we don't I've been an electrician why. a long time. <laughs> when I see that much carbon inside of a panel, <laughs> it's a good thing I wasn't here when they turned it on. <laughs> I don't know what they did, but uh, they, it, it, yeah. The light stayed on tonight, and that that's important. So I just did a lot of arc flash training. Uh, the, the, those pictures <laughs> are in my yeah. mind, and I, I didn't want to see anybody blow up there. So yeah. So once again, post game show brought to you by Mr. D's Ace Home Center. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in tonight. Uh, where do the beat diggers play next at, Rob? They have to well, go somewhere. It's next here in my there. pile somewhere. I'm digging through it real fast. But I think we've got a... Oh, here. Nope. That's 2018 schedule. How come we got two of those? We've got it right here. September 27th, Brush at Ray. Yeah, we're going to travel down to the Ray on my birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Happy early or, birthday. I don't know. I try to quit counting. <laughs> a whole load of them. <laughs> Alrighty, okay. for, for Rob Hastings, I am Tyler Carmen on 1010 KSIR, KSIR.com, and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. 930, the Colorado Preps scoreboard show with Kevin Schaefer will air on 1010 KSIR. This uh, prep show will follow every brush beat digger football during the 2019 season. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.